Bonjour à tous, merci Hello de nous rejoindre. Welcome for this afternoon. We have the pleasure of having with us the President of the European Commission, uh, Ursula von der Leyen. The European Executive is today totally mobilized by the coronavirus crisis that is hitting both European citizens' health and the health of their economy. Madam President, uh, you're in connection with us uh, via duplex. And you have convened for coming Monday a donor conference. You're hoping to collect 7.5 billion euros to fund research and treatment. Why is this conference indispensable today? Yes, last week we had a strong call for action by the WHO and the French President Emmanuel Macron. And here's the response. We know we can only defeat the virus with a vaccine. And for that, we need a global coordination. Not only the research for the vaccine, but also when we have it, the manufacturing, so capacities have to be built up, zillion doses will be needed, and we have to make sure that the vaccine is brought to every corner in the world to a fair and affordable price. And for that, we need global cooperation, and the pledging conference is on filling the funding gap, the $8 billion, which is 7.5 billion euros, are the beginning. And we have aligned all the stakeholders that are necessary, like the WHO, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the Wellcome Trust, but also organizations like CEPI and Gavi for the operational part. And many, many, many countries, heads and state of government are joining this pledging conference. I hope it's going to be a success. Precisely. The EU as such uh, has already allocated hundreds of millions of euros to research. Is that not enough? Why do you also need the support of celebrities and foundations? Because if we want to have a real, true global approach, that is, if somebody has the vaccine, that it's not only given to those who are the fastest and have the money, but that we have enough production capacities that everybody in this world has access to the vaccine and that it can be deployed to vulnerable countries. This is so important for us. Therefore, uh, it's in the European interest, but it's also in a global interest. And for us, it's important not only to care for ourselves, but also to care for our neighbors. Precisely. The U.S. tried to buy out a German biopharmaceutical company, Purevac, uh, that seemed to be working on a promising uh, vaccine, and they're not participating uh, in Monday's conference. Are they trying to go it alone? I presume that's a problem, isn't it? Well, um, there is a strong American footprint in the whole construction. We have a lot of American scientists and philanthropists that are working with us in this global framework we've created. Um, the, the government of the United States is informed, and uh, I hope they consider to participate. We will see at the very end. Um, but it is for us, it was important really to reach out to the whole world. So uh, also to reach out not only to the West, but also to the East, to the North and to the South. So I'm very happy, for example, to have the African Union at my side too. Uh, this is important for us to really include everybody. Okay, you have been somewhat criticized uh, uh, for not having seen the coronavirus tsunami coming, for having been uh, optimistic as to stocks and the healthcare sector response. Do you acknowledge the fact that there was a delay and can that be made up for? Well, we all have to learn our lessons from the crisis and the question of resilience of our healthcare se sectors. I think uh, for the national level, there has to be a deep look into the healthcare systems. But on the European level, there are two things which are important. The first one, we have to improve the uh, robust data reporting and the evaluation of the global data we receive on a pandemic or potential pandemic, an outbreak of a virus. 
And the second is that uh, we've now made sure that on the European level, we're able to buy and stockpile the essential medical goods, like, for example, personal protective equipment like masks and gloves uh, or ventilators. We were not able to do that at the beginning because the structures were not in place. So uh, we fixed that. And I think um, over time, after the crisis, we really have to go in depth what are the lessons we've learned, what do we have to change. Uh, since March 10th, uh, the EU has adopted 60 texts and 160 decisions to facilitate uh, economic support. But apparently, contrary to what people thought, the shock is asymmetrical. It has impacted some countries like France, Italy, and Spain much more than it has impacted the north and the east of uh, uh, Europe. Uh, is it hard to call solidarity into play? because of this? I think we're moving forward in a good pace. Uh, the first immediate reaction on the economic shock was uh, that uh, on the European level, uh, we flexibilized as much as possible state aid and we gave flexibility on all the European funds. And if we look at the initial response, um, then we see that member states and the European Union have put out injected liquidity in their economies uh, in uh, a sum of 3.4 trillion euros. In that, we included also a mechanism on the European level that makes sure that employees can stay in their companies because we pay part of their salary, although there is no income anymore for the companies, just to make sure that people stay in place uh, in the healthy companies. But you're right, there is a second step that will be needed for the recovery. And we're working together on a step forward that is to have a new seven-year budget on the, in the European Union topped by a recovery instrument, which is a little bit like a Marshall Plan idea, that we raise money, that we inject in the channel through the European budget, so that we can be sure that the member states that are the hardest hit by this crisis get help from the European level. And this is strong European solidarity. The European budget is always on investment, on cohesion and on conversion and on solidarity. You were talking about uh, economic stimulus. Uh, but there's uh, this idea that uh, perhaps we'll need a perpetual debt to, to be funded. Uh, some people are worried uh, because some countries like yours and the Netherlands are extremely reluctant to have debt mutualized. How do you see this? Well, I was very happy that we had a strong, united uh, European Council that tasked the Commission to look in building up this new European budget for the next seven years and to frame this recovery instrument. And indeed, there's a debate on what is the right balance between loans giving out to the member state and grants given out to the member states. But I think this is democracy in the European Union. We have 27 member states. We have the north, the east, the south and the west. Um, there are different situations, so we have to accommodate all of them. And I think we should take the time to work in this political process to find a solution that is a strong answer to uh, the corona crisis. It is so important for us because uh, the European Union has a very strong argument, and that's the single market. Um, this will help our recovery if we invest now in the next one to two, th uh, three years. Uh, strongly in the single market because this is the foundation of our prosperity. Madam President, uh, <coughs> lockdown is starting to be eased uh, in various parts uh, of Europe. You have asked for this to be coordinated at the European level so that COVID doesn't start spreading again. Do you have the feeling you've been heard? Yes, I, uh, we have forwarded a exit roadmap to exit with recommendations, and it is good to see um, that we have a well-coordinated approach because we should keep in mind that the epidemiological situation is not similar in every country.
So regions are in different stages. And therefore, it is and was important uh, to talk a lot with the neighbors, to coordinate measures, to lift one measure at a time, then to look whether the virus is flaring up again or contained for two to three weeks, and then go the next steps. Of course, this has to go in, there is not one size fits all. It has to go in close cooperation with the regional and the local level to really fine tune this exit. And what we all know is it will take time. We have to be patient. We have to learn to live with the virus. Right now, we are debating in the European Commission how to structure, for example, tourism in summer, what we can recommend to that. And the only way to get rid of all of this is to find a vaccine. And therefore, we are so keen on having this pledging conference. And finally, some people feel that the European uh, Euro Union might uh, die because of the virus uh, if uh, the crisis overly reveals the faults and the divisions concerning the economy and the single currency. Do you think uh, that the EU well, runs this risk? Well, what we've seen is that uh, the corona pandemic is a huge stress test for the European Union member states in the health sector and in the economic sector. But we've always see, also seen that uh, after a bumpy start, there was a huge uh, visibility of solidarity. I recall uh, the French helping Italy and Spain patients from France going to Germany or Austria for treatment, Bulgarians sending masks in other parts of the European Union, Polish doctors, Romanian doctors going to Italy and help just to name some examples. And the same is for the economic part. Um, we've all, we all know that only st by standing together we're going to get strong out of this crisis. Merci, Madame la Thank you, Madam President, for having been with us uh, on France 24. Uh, thanks, uh, all of you who've been watching us. And please stay with us for further information.